and like. Yay! Yay! Yay. <laughs> the life is a live stream. Friday, Friday. It took a while. Ooh, look at that. Already so much viewers. Oh, I look I look taller than you on the stream, yeah? Right, let me make like, myself a bit tall. Let me grow Very myself tall. a little bit. No, I just made oh, myself no, a little no, bit it's, it's, it's perfect now. That's perfect. Okay, good. Okay. Oh, damn. Whoa. Oh, uh, you can speak Dutch? Well, oh. Oh, that's pretty cool. Not many uh, German people can speak Dutch, though. Oh, well, properly, at least. Yeah. In it's my, Google uh, Translate. Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> still pretty cool. I have to be honest. Uh, so like today I made the Amazon, the Amazon Netherlands listing for the wrist rests. And, uh, I was like, well, mine's so all listed in Dutch. Like, yeah, I should list it in Dutch. And I had to do translations, but I was like, mind fucked. Like, well, I don't know how to translate this. How, how, like I wrote certain stuff already in English. I mean, I wrote the, all the content in English and I'm so used to it and i'm just like how do i say the same thing but then in dutch in the right way but thankfully I had our big friend google translate <laughs> <laughs> so i threw it in google translate and it gives you like for some of them it gives you a really great sentence for others it's a little bit weird but from there you can just adjust it and you can convey the same message which is great so good translate thank you even for my own language thank you <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, did I make a big oopsie in the announcement? Not everyone anymore. Oh my god. Oh, 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 it's happening. There you are, Carlo. There we go. I just adjust the text. So, how's everybody doing in the chat? Tom says, I often use Wikipedia to translate, switching between languages. How, how do you use Wikipedia to translate? In what way? Well, maybe certain words or terms, I can imagine. I mean, does Wikipedia have like a translate? Isn't more like... Oh, you can select a language, right? Oh, right. But then you look up the topic and then select a different language? I guess screen screen could be better. Well, I could be better myself too. Uh, my car got like wrecked last weekend. Uh, so that's kind of horrible. Somebody drove into it, uh, and now we have to wait uh, what insurance will do and how I will get my money back. And uh, did you? You should show the picture. You should show pic. Yeah, let's talk about this here. <laughs> mm, okay. It's the, it's so, the most fun wait, thing to so talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so l l I'll do some proper introduction for the for the stream, by the way. So again, yeah, yeah, the live stream is happening. We're going to do the same format again, where we have a couple of topics. We talk about the topic. At the end of the topic, you can ask questions related to the topic. All other questions you can ask in the meanwhile, uh, and we can throw them into a uh, question buffer or uh, queue. Um, and every question that's not related to the topic will be answered at the end of the, at the end part of the stream, which is like an open session. And that's also where you can ask more questions not related to, to the topic. Um, so today we're first going to check out Eric's car and how wrecked it is. It's, <laughs> uh, do some personal talk. Yeah. Uh, then, uh, we're going to look at the utility, uh, because there is some cool stuff for the utility that. So it's going into the beta version soon, uh, which we can show. Um, then we're going to talk about uh, the U.S. warehouse situation and what's going on over there. Probably not a lot of U.S. people here in the stream right now, but I assume they might watch it on YouTube. So if you're on YouTube, hey, we'll talk about U.S. stuff later. Um, and then we're going to talk about the wrist vests, little bit, little thing. Um, and then we're going to end it with the open session where we have like a open talk topic thing that we have to want to talk about. So 
that's that's going to be this last year. So first three marker, what happened to the car? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll talk about my tan, okay? Uh, we will talk about your tan color. Okay, so. No, what happened to your car first? Okay, yeah. this happened. It's uh, it's actually horrible. So my car is uh, this one, the silver gray one. It's a big Ford Focus station wagon. And uh, a fun fact, I uh, bought this with my girlfriend uh, a month ago. And uh, Saturday morning, it was just parked here in the street. And somewhere in the morning around six, somebody drove through the street, uh, hit a speed bump, started to like, I don't know, slinger or lost control over steering wheel and then bumped right into my car. And it was, it happened with so much force that my car actually moved a whole spark parking spot to the, uh, to the left. And then it hit this car, this little Suzuki. And it also hit like this Renault. So the guy who was driving, he said like, yeah, I was driving like 30 kilometers per hour because this is like a 30 <laughs> kilometer per hour uh, street, but no way. If he's watching the live stream, no way, dude. <laughs> no way, dude. I mean, that, that there's no way that you can move a car that is like 1300 kilos with only 30 kilometers per hour, like one whole parking spot and wreck two other cars in the same, same, in the same process. And, uh, yeah, so that so that kind of sucks. Like this car is totally destroyed. Uh, like probably the engine has issues. The whole front is gone. The side is totally damaged, and probably the sashes of the car is also uh, probably totally bent. And uh, yeah, I just have to wait until the see what the insurance says about how much the damage is and what I will get back of my car. Uh, so yeah, that uh, that kind of sucks, and it also sucks because we just bought it a month ago. But a really f funny thing is. Uh, on the day we bought the car, the guy who wrecked our car, he also bought a car on that day. So that's it was sort of meant to happen that this crash here. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, so that was my car. Uh, that was my fun weekend though. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's so crazy. So, so and you, you should share about how it works with uh, insurance, right? Yeah, so um, so what now? Because my car is not totally uh, in an analysis called like total loss, and that means uh, your car is probably uh, the repair damage isn't economically valid anymore to repair the car. And now we just have to wait until an expert says like, "Hey, your car is totally destroyed," and this was the value of your car right before the accident, and that's probably the amount of money I will get. Uh, uh, I will get from the insurance uh, in a month or so. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if I have a little bit, yeah, I don't know. I I just have to wait and see uh, see what happens. Uh, it's uh, and uh, and you need to buy a new car, right? Yeah, uh, it's, basically, it, it's actually horrible to search for a car, right? Um, yeah, uh, because we don't have money to buy a new car uh, or lease a car, so we need to buy a second-hand car. Um, and most of the time my girlfriend uses it to go to her uh, university and uh, uh, do stuff there. Um, but, you know, you look online for a car and you think like, hey, this is within my budget and it looks good. And then you just, you know, go to the place and check out the car. And then you, I mean, I'm not an expert with cars, so you sort of have to make a guess if this is like worth your money uh, <laughs> or not, or if there's like any hidden things with a car. And uh, yeah, it, it just takes a while before you find a decent nice car. Uh, and after a month or two searching, we finally found one, and now oh, some douchebag destroyed it because uh, we're speeding. <laughs> was pretty, he was probably driving like 60 or 70 through the street and then hit the speed bump, and yeah. Hey, uh, Big Brain AFK, probably. thanks for the sub. Woo! Woo! We're, we still don't have animations and stuff, dude. No, maybe next stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that. But maybe next stream. Every time, maybe next stream. Well, now everybody gets an applause who subs. And all the money goes right to the new car for Eric. <laughs> yeah. oh, well, but uh, on the other hand, you know, uh, the thing we can be thankful for for the whole accident is that nobody got hurt in it. Uh, I heard that the guy who was driving has a little bit of back pain, but nothing too serious. And there were no casualties or injuries. So that's, uh, you know, it's only metal boxes that got destroyed and uh, 
I'm certain. Eric is such a positive guy. No, but I'm certain like the insurance will fix it, you know. It, uh, and yeah. then the insurance doesn't fix oh. it, Eric's totally different than the next stream. Motherfucker, I'm gonna go to his right, home right, and right, get right, my right. money. I'm right back up. I'm getting a call. Uh, sorry. Okay, okay. Oh no. I'm all alone. Oh, I thought he would actually put the, the, the call on the stream. What the fuck? <laughs> um, he's lucky that he hit cars because they're made uh, they're made to be soft and crumbly. Yeah. Actually, uh, you also said it's hard to search for a car in a country where no one has a car and everybody uses a bike. Well, the other side is also at Holland. It's like definitely one of the one of the. Uh, I don't know if it's one of the few, but it's, it is a country where there's a lot of secondhand cars. Like secondhand cars is a big business in the, in the Netherlands. Everybody buys a secondhand, or not everybody, but a lot of people buy secondhand cars. Okay. Versus so, like here here in Taiwan, for example, everybody also new couples every uh, new couples everybody buys a new car. Nobody buys secondhand cars here because it's also some kind of like status thing here status and it has some kind of meaning to buy a new car and not to buy an old car and they also strongly believe in the whole idea of you know you buy a new car you don't have to repair the car as often blah blah and holland it's like old car old car old car cheaper <laughs> <laughs> easy yeah, true. Yeah. i mean you 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 either lease a car or you buy a second hand car i don't think many people buy a new car in the netherlands maybe some no. a few Oh, but hopefully this doesn't happen too often during the stream that I'm being called because you know I'm expecting a call from the insurance today and from the police as well. Uh, but this time it was Amazon Australia. <laughs> Amazon Australia? Yeah, I don't know. I said like going back in like two hours and we'll see what's up. <laughs> oh no, that, no, I, that calls for me, I think. <laughs> well, he will call me back in two hours. He's going to call back in two hours? Mm -hmm. Why did he call your number? Let me see if he answered the email. Okay. Doesn't matter now. Oh, he did. He did. Why did he call your number? I don't know. Should be calling my fucking number. It was not the Skype number. Uh, no, I got it on my phone, actually. Oh, you probably used like the Amazon number. <sighs> We'll figure out as the stream is uh, going on. This is like, I, I, I was like, oh, this week, anywhere around this time. And uh, he was like, oh, can I do tomorrow? And I was like, I didn't respond that email because it doesn't have a high priority on my side. And then I think today I said like, well, you know, next week, Tuesday, starting Tuesday, any day, right? And otherwise, otherwise today, but yeah, okay, anyway. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, Anyway, then I'm going to jump back to this question about why I'm always so freaking tan. I also noticed recently that I'm a lot more tan than I usually am. And uh, it definitely has to do with <laughs> Taiwan being a sunny country. So uh, it's very easy to get tan here. I think I have like a constant tan line also on my arm. Uh, but uh, it's since I started running every morning, um, I'm uh, much more tan than usual yeah, and then because the sun r goes up here already at like 6 a.m. or something so no matter when in the morning I get up the sun is already up and high and it's pretty hot in general uh, so uh, more tan than usual. Interesting uh, I mean thanks to the lockdown I'm even more white than I'm used to so I'm almost shining. Uh... <laughs> oh right yeah oh yeah shit yeah. <laughs> yeah there's also yeah there's also no lockdown here so there, there's also that. Uh, so then I'm here like uh, old pan and like oh, outside. <laughs> Enjoying the sun. Enjoy the sun. Uh, okay, but let's get into the, the, the gist of the live stream. Uh, because. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, okay. Let me add a. Oh, already busy for 15 minutes? Damn. Oh, wow, that goes fast. Okay, speedrun, speedrun time. Okay, um, this has been out for a uh, for a while, uh, and we're very uh, happy with it. It's called the maybe I should show it. It's the Wu Tang 
profiles website. Oof. Maybe I should adjust my stream a little bit. Uh, okay, Carla, can you talk a little bit about the site and I'll fix my... Uh... Okay, sure. Uh, so I'm in the meanwhile trying to do a backup of my laptop if you see that I'm concentrating on something. I'm making on the backup of my laptop. Uh, so, oh, we would do Wootabase? Uh, Wootabase? Yeah, Wootabase. So uh, I don't know if Kop is in the, on the live stream right now or in the chat. But uh, the Wootabase has been live already for a while, kind of a half beta thing. And the Wootabase is a, is a profile website, profile uh, Wooting keyboard profile database website. And Kop. Uh, has been working on uh, the Wootabase for a pretty long time <laughs> by now. Um, before this, the Wootabase looked a bit different, uh, but the concept was the same. You can uh, look up different uh, for different game profiles on the Wootabase uh, because it's a database for these profiles. But now the latest version, together with uh, not Daryl, who's in the chat here, uh, he uh, spiced up the interface a bit and it looks a lot better and uh, polished a couple of things. And now uh, it's the official, unofficial booting uh, gaming profile database uh, called the Wootabase. And um, it will start to grow from this point on. Uh, right now it's very, still very to the point where it's about uh, finding profiles from other people and sharing profiles with other people with uh, an overview of what you can expect from the keyword layout. I, I can probably show a profile that's on there. Yeah. And then the que uh, there's already the question, why official unofficial? Because uh, we legally don't own the website. Uh, Cop Vampire owns the website. Uh, and we also don't want to deal with any kind of like GDPR or any other legal stuff at this moment. So we don't want to put it under our, officially put it under our hood. Um, and that's, so as soon as we do that, there is a lot more stuff we need to do about it. And we just don't want to do that now. So that's why it's officially the unofficial one. Um, and for we purposely made sure that there is an account system there, but we don't want anybody to make an account because again, it's not an official website and we are not the ones that are um, managing that information. So it's not meant to, uh, it's not meant to do accounts at this moment. There's just a few accounts, which are the administrators. Yeah, and uh, I think it's very cool. Uh, Cop Vampire and not Daryl, they uh, spend a lot of time on it. Finishing oh, it. I see what you want to do. That's why you're starting from here. Yeah, oh. yeah. okay. Ooh, you see? Smart, yeah, right? Yeah, it's smart. It's, it's yeah, smart. very smart. It's smart. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's clever. Uh, Isn't there a link to it from within the utility? Uh, I think. No. Uh, well, no. Yeah, I should answer this question because at, at this moment, no. But eventually, there will be. No, right, Eric? Uh, no, no. Well, probably there will be. Like maybe on the startup screen, we'll uh, incorporate it, and maybe uh, within a future update, we can incorporate it more into the utility or uh, push it more into the utility but uh, for the next beta release it uh, it won't be that prominent except for a uh, you know on the splash screen uh, what is it the welcome interface uh, uh, where we will make note of it but it's very cool so you can reach your site through profiles.wooting.io or wootingprofiles.com uh, either site will work and it will redirect you to the Wootabase um, like I said it's made by Cop Vampire and uh, Daryl VS, or no, uh, not Daryl, not Daryl. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's pretty cool. So once you get here to the site, you have like a nice overview of the latest posters, uh, the newest profile that have been that has been have been added, and a few statistics about the games that are covered and the amount of profiles that are here. Um, in the top, you can search for a uh, game or a tag. So let's say I want to search all action games, uh, I'll see it and then you have a nice overview of, of all the action games that are here uh, uh, on the platform. Or you can search for a specific game like Killing Floor 2. Um, and once you delve, dive into a profile, let's say I want to check out the uh, Apex Legends DKS. Um, yeah, you have hey, like Techno Echo. Hello. Um, you have a uh, nice overview of the color setting that's there, some uh, settings that have been turned on, 
and uh, you can see DKS bindings. I think if you click on here, you can see like, hey, there's a DKS binding there, and this profile sort. Maybe this is a bad example. Let me see if there's another one that is even cooler. That's a pretty boring profile. It's a pretty boring profile. Um, uh, the, I know which one will be probably sick here. Count strike. Does this work? Yes. Let's see. Um, I'm assuming that the Techno Echo, you're in the US since you just woke up. So that's pretty cool. We have a US person in the stream. We don't often have people from the US in the stream or Canada or North America, uh, be the case. Okay, so, um, um, mm -hmm. okay, so in this view, you have like a nice overview of the whole profile. And uh, what a user can do is uh, fill in like a whole list with screenshots of videos. Uh, if there's anything that needs special setup or a bit more explanation about the profile. And that's, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool, uh, pretty complete. And uh, yeah, I can only say to users like, hey, everybody submit your profile here for others to share. And if you're looking for a certain profile, uh, check this website out first. Uh, and if it isn't there, just, you know, add it there because adding a profile is also very easy. You just click create profile on the left side. And here you paste in your profile code that you can get out of the utility for your profile. Fill in uh, the profile name, your Discord handle, uh, some tags, a game title, and it should automatically load everything once you have filled in your uh, profile code. And once it's sort of complete, you press submit and it will be added to the website, uh, which is very, uh, very cool. So let's say I open the utility here and uh, I take like, a, I don't know, what is it? Uh, for long Insta Stomp, uh, click share, got the code copy to my uh, clipboard, paste the code and see it's already loaded in what the profile is about uh, which is pretty uh, yeah pretty cool and then i can fill in the minor details and submit it and it's there for the world to see uh, which is very cool uh, pretty and, it's pretty pretty smooth in that way and for all your Europe, european people out there here's like uh, in the left bottom corner it's like a little toggle to switch between an iso layout and the ANSI layout which also very neat. Hey, uh, also, oh, I'm, I'm surprised there's a lot more people from Canada and US on this chain. Also, the Tommy Man, Tang Games, uh, and Erect Erectile Dysfunction. So, hey! <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, here the view is like all of the Wooting 2 keyboards because uh, the Wooting 2, all Wooting 2 profiles are compatible with the Wooting 1, and Wooting 1 profiles are compatible with the Wooting 2. The only difference is if the Wooting one does have a numpad. So if there's like a profile with a lot of stuff binding on a numpad, then yeah, that kind of sucks. <laughs> but then again, you know, uh, you can still look into the profile uh, and see how it's being set up. And maybe you can copy it to your own keyboard manually. But overall, this setup should go for like 99% of all cases, uh, I guess. Yeah, and that's pretty yeah. cool. Uh, yeah, see, it's uh, added Daryl. But now, this profile website. what happens, Eric, uh, if, um, if let's say, um, you have the new utility beta that comes out in two weeks and uh, you want to uh, add a profile to your utility, what does that look like now? Uh -huh. Since I heard a lot of complaints about how hard it is to know that you can even import a profile and that doesn't always work, which is so annoying. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so in the past, there was like a, uh, let's see what, the, this, this looks like a cool profile. Uh, it's from uh, Mr. Pleasant for Warframe, like a cool farming game, uh, added some YouTube videos and a help scout dog. <coughs> Funny that the YouTube video isn't embedded though. Um, okay, so in the past, how, uh, so I'm currently on the alpha version of the utility. Uh, this alpha version will go into beta within two weeks. So that's pretty cool. Finally, everybody can start using the remap feature because the uh, beta is open um, but uh, a complaint we had for the last yeah maybe year is that it wasn't clear for users how to actually import profiles into the utility um, when we created it you and I we felt like that we came up with something very cool that once you have a uh, profile copied on your clipboard uh, once you open the utility uh, the create both profile button would change it to an import profile button and you could click it and the profile was added uh, down below here uh, it turned out that in some cases it was buggy and nobody actually understand how it worked so looking back to it, it was just you know bad UX even though the idea was very cool it was like not 
really feasible. Uh, so what you and I did, we uh, made something new. So let's say I uh, found a nice profile here in the Bootabase website. Uh, I can uh, click here on the profile code and uh, it's copied already. It's like so cool is this website. Now the code is under my clipboard and I can go into the utility and next to the create profile button we have like a new icon uh, and that's now for importing profile, importing profiles. And once you click it, a little menu pops up where you can paste in your profile code and it will sail it. It can give some error messages, but uh, if like your code is too short or incomplete or this code isn't recognized, then it says like, hey, uh, the code is incorrect, blah, blah, blah. So once you have a, a correct code, you can uh, import it. And once you click on import profile, uh, it gets added to you. Wow, sick animation. Whoa. <laughs> It, uh, oh, it gets, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. <laughs> it's getting edited here. In the oh! Oh! <laughs> what an animation. Holy crap. I haven't, I haven't seen the animation yet. They were so hyping me up about this animation. <laughs> <laughs> I really like it, uh, and then, you know, then the profile's in your utility and you can simply drag it uh, over one of your active profiles. And now I have the Warframe profile from Mr. Pleasant. And yeah. It's pretty cool. Uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I can see that everything is binded that needs binding, and yeah, nice analog curve. As you can see, it sort of similar to what you can see in the uh, preview of the Wuta base, and uh, yeah, pretty sick, pretty cool. All right, to answer the the Trello question there, um, so the Trello board is still relevant. Uh, that is the uh, that roadmap link from not Daryl is correct. Uh, it is indeed not 100% up to date. Uh, Jeroen is aware that it's not 100% up to date and he will update it uh, soon enough. Uh, I'm not sure why he hasn't updated it yet, but he usually has a very good reason to why. It could be that once he releases the beta, he will also update the Trello board to better reflect what's happening because um, all the alpha releases right now are enclosed. Those are closed alphas. And uh, there's a lot of like, you know, there is a list of things, list of bugs and list of features that will go into this, uh, this version. Uh, but over these alphas, some things were added, some things were subtracted, some things are just going to wait for more feedback on beta. So it, it changes a bit fast. So uh, it might be because of that, that, uh, He'll wait until the beta release to update the Trello board. Yeah, the, uh -huh. so this alpha, because we currently have a very long alpha going on. And uh, it's because of like one big feature that is in there. It's the, the remap feature and it has been adjusted a few times and the alpha has been updated a few times. And we're very glad to and that everybody who participates in the alpha gives like tremendous amount of very great feedback so we can uh, improve the whole software uh, and utility. And uh, yeah. We also made like the input profile thing based on their uh, their feedback, and at the moment they're very happy with it how it goes. And like one of the feedbacks is that uh, something disappeared. <laughs> something disappeared in the key mapping. We uh, there used to be a storage box, for oh, example, right? Did uh, didn't we talk about it a few streams back? Oh, maybe. Maybe probably haven't talked about it. Like we we used to have here a little storage thing on the right side which was very funny. You could store like keys there that you didn't use at the moment, but uh, yeah, nobody used it. And we also didn't saw any purpose of it uh, for it. Uh, uh, another very cool thing that uh, has been an issue in the, uh, uh, for this remapping thing, uh, and uh, you can finally find a cool solution for it, is the indicator lights, right? So uh, caps lock and windows lock, they have like these uh, indicator uh, lights when you, uh, uh, yeah, so for example, if you press caps lock, the, the color can change. So you can change the end utility. Uh, at the moment, this is white, but uh, let's say if you press caps lock, I can turn it into blue or into a yellow, whatever. Uh, um, but now, let's say you bind caps lock to a whole different key. Um, for example, uh, you swap around your escape game, cats and caps lock, which is pretty uh, pretty common. So I can just now, you know, swap them around, save to keyboard, and now the indicator light goes with you to this new position. So this, so this is also new uh, uh, for the beta. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, it took you a lot of work to uh, make it work properly and uh, figure it out like technology wise, how it would like 
properly work all together even though it, it sounds really simple like oh your indicator light should travel to the key to the place where your caps lock key is but it's a bit more difficult coding wise and uh, making it work uh, with all these different scenarios but uh, he now found a solution and that's working uh, very good so that's pretty cool yeah and you know uh, can't wait for and everybody the to question, start using the remap will, will numlock will numlock also have an indicator light eric uh, maybe <laughs> Jeroen, was, Jeroen was supposed to this, you, this was supposed to be Jeroen's thing I, I'm, I'm now doing a technical demo even though I'm like a technical dude <laughs> but I know for a fact that the uh, uh, Windows lock thing uh, uh, oh. uh, is it here? do we have a lock key? not sure if that's been added remember the new solution for Windows lock is basically a key disable and it just swaps that single key with the second layer, oh, something that's, like that. That's pretty interesting because I'm searching for lock. Oh, there it is. Huh. Okay. I put it on my alt key. Oh. Sorry. Oh, no. The fan, the fan has a thing. No, the Windows lock does have a light, but the fan key does. And probably when you move the fan key around, it will. Uh, uh, yeah, but I think if you add multiple caps locks, so this was also an issue. Let's say you want to have multiple uh, uh, caps lock on your keyboard. Uh, I think the uh, light just stays on the first place where you added the uh, caps lock. Maybe it doesn't. Huh. So it just makes you see there's like there's always a lot of things to consider. Yeah, it, it probably all change. You change one and it all change. You change one of them? Oh, look. Yeah. So let's say I change one color, they all change the same thing. And I think only one uh, key gets influenced with it. Yeah. It's only one. Uh, it's the last one where you bounded it. So at this moment, my F3 key, even though all the keys work as caps lock, only my F3 key has to highlight on it. Uh, so maybe this should uh, also change because it's kind of confusing. Uh, yeah. Great technical demo. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this kind of it makes it it makes clear that um, there's a good reason why it, it's oh well, especially this future, it, it takes a while um, for it completely uh, before it's completely done. But at least um, in the next in the beta that's coming, the open beta that's releasing, there's already a couple of things that uh, Irun and Eric know that need to change. But then at least more people can start using it. Um, and we can get more feedback and then we can get closer to a final one because the things that, that should change are not major things and uh they and correct me if i'm wrong mostly want to focus on um ironing out glitches and bugs that might be there but not so much adding more ux uh future-esque uh things to it right no 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 so like yeah. what you saw like with all these indicator lights maybe we can uh change it uh well, we probably won't change before the beta. Uh, the beta will be pushed like this, I guess. Uh, maybe some if there are some critical bugs that we figure out, we'll uh, fix them. Um, but yeah, and then hopefully the beta will get some nice response so we can finalize it into the official version. Uh, yeah, which is pretty neat. We can add the Maverick Man's question to the open session part. Like we we don't uh, have the we don't have a lecker topic in this stream, and that's mostly because we covered lecker in the last live stream, and there's an update out there uh, on the web page, and ooh, well now I'm already answering this. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and answering it at the end would I would go in a bit more details, I guess. But the the point is that. Um, more information will 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 start rolling out more information when we get closer to the middle of may uh because then we have a couple of things that finished a lot of the stuff that was shared in the last update is still relevant still the same still working on it uh and conclusions are now rolling in uh, over these next couple of weeks yeah. uh now on to this topic how are you wooting guys doing during this period of time Oh shit. Okay, wait. So we add that one to the list, okay? It's added to the list. Okay. Then we talk about how we are doing. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. 
so yeah that was the utility part right yeah yeah i mean the, the there's not much to say about it. only i can ask like everybody if you have profiles for games please submit them to the database thing because the more profiles there are the better uh, and we can make a nice uh, database for all future routing users uh, uh, yeah to share profiles and, and, on. To, and to add on that is to give an idea what the plan is with profiles in general is for now we're keeping it very uh, much uh, for now it's fairly simple as in you know you make your profiles you can store profiles you can share them with each other as conveniently as possible um, but it's not really wholly integrated very well with like game games or with the utility itself exploring profiles from others etc uh, we and what we're kind of hoping for is that um, the Vuta first the Vuta base has more profiles and there is more reason uh, to share profiles with each other like it, there should be a need and demand for sharing profiles with each other and we think that the remapping future is definitely going to make it even more interesting to share profiles with each other um, and we, uh, when the lecture edition is out there and we have the full analog uh, range and we'll have more features out there the need for sharing profiles is just going to get bigger and bigger and then we're going to look at how can we integrate sharing profiles into the utility in a very light, uh, as light as possible, as possible first. Um, but yeah, we're not that far yet. But that's kind of the direction we're we're taking, uh, taking this whole thing. Uh, can you add? Oh, here's some uh, related questions, uh, Eric. Can you add indicator lights to any key? So Wait, stop. I can't... Don't spoil it. Oh, no, we have the question thing. Yes, now, now, now you can say it. Oh, okay, so I can take a look at my keyboard to see if my mic is muted in Discord or something. Would make life a lot easier. That's, uh, that is a, so That's what we... very difficult to do, I think, with muting mics and different uh, programs, because I think if you, have it specifically over uh, Discord, then we should probably tap into their uh, API if they have an API uh, and see if your mic is muted there. And uh, that sounds like it has to set up if they don't have a uh, proper API, even though it's very cool. But what I also noticed with Discord is like you have like your in game, uh, where you say overlay in the top left corner, there you can see if your mic is muted and uh, if other people are talking and everything. Even though the, the idea is cool, I don't see how we can. Uh, yeah, easily make it for Discord specifically. Nice how the whole thing is covering my face. It's covering your face? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's because of this view. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Should be better uh, now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, originally the RGB SDK was also made to support this kind of stuff. And we, we made like a little demo at that time, which doesn't work anymore. Um, but yeah, I don't see that happening very soon, right? No. Oh. I mean, it's a cool feature, but it will also be very low priority because uh, a while ago, Jeroen and I and Simon, we sat down all together and we came up with uh, a whole list with things we uh, want to add to the utility and to a whole software thing before the uh, LECO release. And that's also something we're working uh, towards. Uh, and the big thing about it is like easier pro for sharing a, um, uh, dynamic profile or something. Yeah, dynamic profiles is also something we really want to look into. Uh, so you can have profiles based on a, a program that's starting, so it automatically swaps. And maybe uh, cloud profiles even. Um, yeah, and maybe better sharing within the utility of profiles. Uh, uh, but those are all things that will. Uh, uh, yeah, will come in the near future. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, let's see. I've always done the interview life. Um, just taking a look if there's a relevant question. Yes, here's a very relevant question. I see. I need to wait for. Oh. There are keys oh, to yeah. open the calculator or the email. Could it be possible to run other programs in the future? Um, Maybe uh, it won't be in the version one of remapping, uh, but it's something that uh, we could add that you can add your own, uh, yeah, shortcuts towards towards it. Maybe sounds like a cool idea. I'll uh, I'll put it on the list. 
it kind of gets close to this macro idea. Yeah. But I, I think also, it's still a bit unsure, right? Um, but if we would do any kind of macro implementation, it would start with you you press something and it activates a application or a sort a function or something like that, but not necessarily like a, a time sequence of keys or something, um, but more specific things. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the, I just at the moment better programs out there that we can make it in utility on a short uh, short short amount of time so uh, I yeah. would suggest looking into auto hotkey uh, that's pretty a uh, complete program yeah and maybe uh, another side I know we're kind of also it's a bit too easy to say auto hotkey because uh, for example for myself I would not be a person that would use auto hotkey just because the sheer amount of effort it requires to get into it it doesn't have a really friendly interface to work with uh, but the other side um, all the work on macros and added value, I feel if you are serious about macros, you should be using auto hotkey or another program that does macros. If you're not so serious about macros, most of the time, if you use the manufacturer software, it's just like simple, basic stuff that you're using it for or gimmick stuff. But yeah, it could be totally underestimated. I mean, uh, it's just like RGB effects, right? That's pretty high. New RGB effects, that's pretty high in the list, right? Hey? Uh, new RGB. Uh? We can never have enough RGB. Uh? There are some cool uh. ideas for RGB effects, though. Uh, uh. Uh, especially with the lack edition with more memory in it, uh, it's also easier to uh, program it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to make more elaborate uh, RGB effects and other crazy stuff. I have a question. I see utility in there, so it must be relevant. Uh, where is it? Which one? Enraged Eliminator or Eliminate, yeah, Eliminator. Okay, let's see, let's see. I have a question. Is utility already capable of analog binding like half pressing for lowercase letters and full press would be uppercase? Um... You can simulate it right now using okay. DKS. Yeah, yeah, yeah but so... it doesn't, it's not necessarily made for that kind of situation and it doesn't really work you'll notice that and you will not have enough keys to make it work in that kind of situation it will be more like specific keys uh, because there's a limitation to how much dks keys you can have so let's say you uh, uh you want to do it uh, at the moment you can only have like 20 uh, bindings on your whole keyboard stored so uh, you cannot even cover all your alpha uh, characters sadly enough um, but what you could do uh, if you really want to do it um, let's say you have q and when you press it it's uh, it's q and it's always going to be a q as soon as you press it uh, and then add shift on the bottom and now you sort of have it uh, simulated uh, so once you press it halfway it's a small q and once you press it further way down it's a big q uh, as you can see uh, here it's a big q and now it's like oh like a uh, small q normal q once you press it all the way down it has like q and shift together uh, so that's how you can uh, simulate it yeah. When can I download more RAM for my routine too? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I should add to the, to the, let's say half a press, full press, upper lowercase situation. I think what you'd really want, uh, what I can just can't imagine that it's a nice experience to have all uppercases when you press it all the way down and all lowercases when you press it halfway, because. Uh, it's very difficult to control that when you're typing. Uh, I don't know who can control, who is that good in typing, they can really control it that well, they don't bottom out at all when they're typing. Because the faster you go, the less control you have over it. So, so, so yeah, I'm doubtful if that will even uh, work out. Okay. Um, yeah. I guess this is like the most uh, important question of the day. Um, this one. Does the utility have a dark theme? Of course. What software does have a dark theme? Of course. While he's showing that, there's a related question to what we just talked about. Uh, not question. Maybe someone with really heavy springs could be able to do that. Yeah, you're right. If you would have really heavy springs, you would definitely be able to do that. That's a good point. Yeah. Didn't really consider that. Or you need to have springs that are that ramp up 
very fa- like they start light and they ramp up into a very heavy weight very fast <laughs> that would work yeah that would work that would work but i think what would be even better if you combine the position of the key together with the velocity of where you're pressing it so in that way with a certain velocity of pressing it plus the depth that you're pressing at will kind of like give a double com- double confirmation that you want to type into uh, in uh, like upper cases um, and velocity right now uh, is not done hasn't yeah we're not doing velocity yet we plan to do velocity but we're not doing velocity yet okay this one is pretty uh, pretty cool what Daryl just shared if you really want to have it uh, perfectly uh, that once you press it slightly it only fires once and uh, all the way down you have like a capital you add a backspace and only a single trigger, uh, which is, I think, the the best solution to this issue. So then you. Whoa, know, that's uh, such a sick one. But it's pretty smart though, because of yeah, it's words. really smart. So it actually <laughs> removes your uh, yeah, yeah, that's sick. So it's slightly press, it's just one W, and all the way down press is a big W, and uh, yeah, sick. This is uh, this is the solution you need. Yeah, yeah, not Daryl. Uh... DKS professional. DKS master. Nice. Nice. I dig it. Uh, let's see. Do we have a relevant type stick? Oh, and for, for thanks for the subscription. Oh! Man, we're eight subscribers now. Jesus. We're going pro, guys. We're going pro. Oh, you also missed that Quinn cheered uh, 9 bits 37 minutes ago. We are such oh, a shit. bad streamer. Yeah, like, wow. Quinn! How much was one? Uh, 100 bits was like one cent, right? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, wait, wait. I know. I think actually 100 bits was a euro or something. It's like a, a one bit is a cent or something, I guess. Um. New car inbound, hey? <laughs> oh, oh what Jesus, what's happening here? Oh my god, oh, all the stuff is coming in. What does it mean? I don't know what it means! <laughs> oh shit. Okay, so Big Brain of Gay just gifted five tiers, sips to people. I... Wow, we're <laughs> such a Twitch noobs. <laughs> oh, damn. Next week, we really need to I, have I like pop ups and stuff. And... <laughs> I feel a bit. I feel a bit stupid that I just, I don't understand what it means. <laughs> well, Big Brain FK, like he time. gifted subscription to other users to our channel, if I'm correct. So he gifted it to Winter Yas, uh, uh, Ryza, Elfin, Sean, and Dr. Cheese. Right, so, so, but when, right now there's no benefit of subscribing, right? <laughs> there is, there is. Like, there is? If you are subscribed to the channel, you get like priority questions and all the features we will add to the utility at some point. <laughs> <laughs> no, we will uh, promise next stream will be better and we'll figure it out. And uh, we just go into a little Twitch class and see what it all means. Uh, all okay. right. But we're very grateful. Yeah, yeah. We're very, very grateful. Uh, um, okay. Let's go to the next minor topic because there are so many American and Canadian people here in the live stream. Um, what's up with the Canadian people, Carla, and the American people? Why are they waiting for the keyboards? Right, so I sent an email, last email, update email I sent yesterday. Um, I'm assuming the people in the stream are not waiting for an order, but if you're somebody that is in the, U- in the US uh, or in Canada and you have an order that starts with US and ends with S, uh, then most, and you've ordered in the last month or so, then your order is probably not shipped yet and you don't have it yet. And that's because we're, our previous fulfillment uh, center got bought up by a new fulfillment service, uh, which is called Ruby Has. And in this last month, they kind of, well, to put it very plain, they kind of fucking up the whole transition. They're, they're missing deadline. They had good intentions about how to do the transition, which went way too fast. Uh, it's also very obvious in, la- in this last month, they're doing things way too fast and it's all way too sudden. They've missed a lot of deadlines. We we don't have access to our stock. It's somewhere in between two facilities now. Um, 
And uh, yeah, we can't ship <laughs> until the stock is at the new facility. And uh, they were supposed to deliver at least within this last week, which didn't happen. And the reason why is because uh, if they would have delivered it within this last week, we would be able to still ship uh, or make all the order shipments and ship out everything that we missed out on, or that we were not able to ship in the meanwhile while they were doing this like transfer of goods. Um, and then they could, on the last day of this week, do the software integration switch. So we used to have EasyPost as our fulfillment center. Now Ruby has is doing the fulfillment and they both do use a different software integration. So now we need to move, you know, all our backend and automations that we set up from EasyPost to Ruby has. And that was supposed to happen. Now that I think about it, that was supposed to happen yesterday where we'd get information. They missed the deadline. They moved the date. That was supposed to be today. And now the website says it's going to be between today and Sunday. So they're obviously way over their head with, uh, with all the stuff they need to do for this whole transfer. Uh, I have, uh, I have no doubt that, uh, in, in the end, we'll have the stock. We can do the shipments. That's not really an issue, but, uh, what is an issue is that it's just taking much longer than they're proposing that it would take. They're underestimating stuff and they're not giving very clear information to what we can exactly expect. And every time it's like maybe two, three days ahead that we get some kind of information or know a little bit about what's coming next but we don't know when it will be done or ready. So this is really, really frustrating because we have a bunch of orders that are just waiting to ship. Um, the, uh, I talked in the update also, March is one of, March was one of our best months. And now it looks like April is going to be even better than March. Uh, so there's a lot of orders waiting to ship, uh, from April. Yeah. Eric, the, this was a very good month in April. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. It's really a strange. New car, it's... when? New car, when? <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, it, for now, it looks, for now, the only thing I know is that uh, according to their schedule, the transfer should happen within, the, within these three days, software-wise. And then on the 4th of May, which is the first Monday, this coming Monday, we should be able to ship again. Um, I'm suspecting, however, now is that they're not going to make the 4th of May deadline. Um, and it's probably going to be like 6th of May or 7th of May. Um, and they're, well, this is what you, Americans say, their rep, <laughs> the representative or their customer service basically says they're working very hard every day to check in all the stock at their, at the Kentucky facility, which is the new facility. Um, yeah, and they're working as fast as they can, and that's all. All I can do. It sucks, right? I mean, yeah, we can only uh, can only wait. Certainly not. If I, as a U.S. resident, were to order Wooting Two, would I be able to get one in a reasonable amount of time? Well, like the situation should be that if you get it, uh, if you get it today, for example. Um, then we should be able to send your order shipment on the 4th of May. But if our stock is not checked in at the four, before the 4th of May, then we can't even make an order shipment. Um, even if our stock is checked in, I'm assuming they need to catch up with a lot of shipments. So maybe it won't ship until the end of this coming week. But I have like no clue what's going on there. I have no clue what they're able, what they're capable of. So it's really hard for me to know what to expect, but just from a, you know, talking from, from a sensical point, I would just expect shipments to happen end of the week. Uh, if we're, uh, if we're positive or optimistic, I mean, if we're optimistic end of the week. Yeah. It's also a pretty uh, BS to be honest, like that easy post can just say like, Hey, you guys have like this amount of time to uh, either get the fuck out or move to uh, this new company. Uh, and the time limit is like really narrow. <laughs> I mean, uh, we sort of depend yeah, also I, on operation, and it, it's impossible uh, the amount of the short amount of time they they give you to arrange everything. That's uh, it's just not doable, you know. Uh, yeah. These are things that should you know should take months in, in advance. They should notify you so you can prepare, maybe search for a different yeah. thing, and 
make everything as smooth as possible, but this is just like, oh, sh shit goes wild, let's go. Yeah, it's very yeah, it's bad really business. strange. Also, I I tried to find more information about what's going on and if uh, there were some kind of telltales before, let's say before the end of March, that Easy Post would sell sell basically sell the whole fulfillment company. And I was only able to find like two signs that started in February. One was that apparently Easy Post did some kind of eBay fulfillment partnership, where eBay would do in-house fulfillment using Easy Post fulfillment services. But they canceled this pilot program uh, and probably because it didn't work out with easy post and then beginning of march there was a news report about um that their louisville where they're located apparently they were expecting to fire or uh to have layoffs of 75 employees and that was kind of i don't know if I think that it's kind of still before it really hit the corona stuff the COVID 19 stuff hit big in the us and everybody was talking about layoffs and unemployment and everything. It was getting close, of course, uh, but I think it was not related necessarily to COVID-19. And maybe that COVID-19 would have like uh, the company uh, suddenly. But on the other side, uh, from my understanding, if there's a, a type of business that's earning very well right now, uh, or an industry that should be earning pretty well right now, it should be anything that has to do with uh, online sales and these kind of fulfillment centers, they thrive on like online sales. Um, so they should be having a lot more orders, a lot more shipments. Um, but at the same time, they have a lot more regulations to keep, keep in check and deal with COVID-19 stuff and maybe insurances. I don't know how it works in the U S necessarily, but yeah, I think they already had some issues beforehand, which just now suddenly. Okay. Yeah. Um, a anyway. little bit off topic. Masik bucks. Uh, you can get some sub emotes for your subscribers. That's a pretty cool idea. We should. We should. In the next live stream, we will have sub emotes. Yeah. Oh, did you just mute yourself, Eric? No. Did I? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Uh, no, okay. Your mic did get a bit more quiet, I guess, because of uh, you putting the bottle on the table. Oh. Fulfillment centers are overwhelmed with orders. Banjo Fox, yeah, exactly. Like it's it's like a good and a bad thing. Like a good thing for them, this means that you are able to get a lot of revenue. A really bad thing is that uh, you know you need to deal with a higher a lot more demand, and if and maybe you don't have the capacity to deal with that demand. But for you know for any fulfillment company to do a transfer during this period, you know it's like the stupidest thing ever. You should imagine that uh, it's not just our stock that's moving. It's like a lot of other companies' stock also moving. And they're ramping up orders like crazy, right? So once they finish the, trans the, the transfer, they have a shit ton of orders they need to start shipping. And more than usual because there's just a lot more, uh, a lot more orders right now than, uh, than what they would usually have. So the timing is also really bad. It's so stupid. Oh, well. Uh, oh, my God. I dropped off a package the other day, and there was a mountain of other people people's parcels that was almost hard to see over. Yeah. Could get. And reduce the prices or feed my... Postanel? Postanel? Oh, Postanel makes me sick to my stomach. Postanel is only good for the Netherlands. <laughs> like, every other country just avoided the... Uh, we 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 tried it. Now we're at, we're now we are partnered with DHL, and that's ten million times better. I think uh, I have this uh, feeling that uh, for Easy Post, the prices they were the prices they had, and the way they calculated the cost for every shipment had some serious issues, and they were not charging enough money for these shipments. Uh, there are definitely ways how you could, like, in labor or with any other fulfillment, you would have to pay pretty much more, where with them you would just pay the same price. As uh, uh, So, for example, if you need to pick a lot of little items together and into one order, it would still be the same price for them. With other fulfillment, that would be extra cost because of the extra time. Um, 
And I, I don't know if they maybe did that so they could grow the fulfillment business, like losing money per order, but then at the same time being able to acquire a lot more customers. And it's kind of like a strategy they had, which a lot of these like software, silicone software, blah, blah companies uh, have. And maybe that it just, they miscalculated <laughs> how much it would cost. And now with the additional demand, it got too much, you know? Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. I'm just very curious. Look, I'm talking about this like in this way because I'm just so curious. Like what the what the hell happened, you know? Other than, oh, fuck you. Uh, oh, yeah, I said I'd duck you uh, uh, for uh, handling the situation like this. Oh no, now we need to take it as mature content on uh, YouTube. Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> Hours of streaming, no! <laughs> All that extra revenue gone. Yeah. Now it's, uh, uh, but it it's very interesting. Even though it, uh, uh, these companies like Easy Post uh, should have been like a major partner from us, right? Because they keep our inventory, they make sure our customers get their packages, uh, whatever they ordered. But to be honest, I never treat them really that way. It's like ah, oh, you know, you're just doing your job, and <laughs> it's nothing special. But now when uh, I wouldn't say shit hits the fan, but when something radical like this happens, uh, it's very dangerous, you know, because let's say uh, Easy Post went totally bankrupt and it said like, oh no, we cannot do any uh, inventory pushes because maybe we need to sell it for, for money or whatever, you know, that was sort of very screwed. So <laughs> uh, it's also yeah, a very good lesson for would, us. Legally, legally, they don't no, own the inventory, no, no. thankfully. Of course but not. But you are right that if they would be absolutely bankrupt and suddenly, you know, they don't give a shit which, about your inventory because yeah, if, uh, like, oh, I almost did it. Like, uh, duck you, uh, we're bankrupt and uh, we don't want to spend more money basically, right? <laughs> uh, that would be uh, pretty, uh, that would be pretty uh, screwed. We would be pretty screwed because we don't live in the US. We have no access to that. Where we can't physically go there. No. I can hop on an. I can't. No, I can't even hop on an airplane to go there. <laughs> now what? Get all the packages. <laughs> well, all I don't keyboards. know. You know, I, I do have family living in the U.S. So I don't know. Go there. Get hire a truck or something, or hire people to do something, <laughs> and then go to the facility to make sure it goes well or something. I mean, yeah. No, but 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 even though because with Easy Post everything was automated and I think we're very happy with because most of the time it, uh, it worked out so you sort of take it for granted that they're even there and you don't think about them on a daily basis or even on a monthly basis well maybe when you pay the bills you know it's like oh yeah Easy Post it's also a thing but still it's uh, yeah it's interesting what kind of impact they yeah. have. Well, Banjo Fox, for, thankfully right now you don't need to drive there. But uh, yeah, we could just send the whole routing team to uh, to the <laughs> <laughs> uh, email to all everybody from the US. Uh, oh, the facility! This is the address. This is where all the stock is. Help us! Uh, Let's collect rate it. them. Rate them. <laughs> rate them. <laughs> okay. Okay, I've been pulling this uh, this topic too far. Okay, let's. <laughs> what was the next topic? <laughs> Post food. That's a good thing. Uh... They move. Well, I think the next topic we have is sort of a bonus topic, but I don't think we should do it today. Uh, uh, oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, yeah, that's really let's, bonus. Uh, yeah. Let's just focus on the questions now and uh, let's open the stream to... Uh, open oh, camera. no, no. Oh. Uh, oh. Small announcement. That was the, that would be the final topic. Is the wrist rests are now available on Amazon, except for Amazon.com, because there's no stock. So it doesn't show, but it's there. So um, basically every Amazon, you can now get the wrist rest, but it still ships from our warehouse and it still has basically the same shipping cost or more. And the 10 kilos one is more expensive on Amazon. So uh, yeah. I still recommend to get it from our website. In the future, we are considering to do Amazon FBA and that should reduce shipping costs and provide better service from Amazon. But right now, it's not interesting for us to do that. What Calder is saying, like, if you order directly with us, we get the most money and we're the happiest. But if you want to get it from Amazon, my advice, get an Amazon Prime subscription. You have, like, free shipping, get it very fast. You have Amazon Video, all these benefits. And you can do, oh, no. And you can do Prime subscriptions on the Wooting channel. It's like a win, 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 win for everyone. 
<laughs> but, but but I will be exactly in that corner over there of this room crying because I had to pay 15% commission <laughs> to Amazon and that includes the taxes that you paid, okay? So it's not like excluding taxes 15%, no, it's including taxes 15%, okay? And uh, that would be for the wristvest. If it was a keyboard, I think in Europe it's also 15% now I think about it. Yeah. I think only in the US it's 12%. But I'll be crying in that corner. <laughs> Don't do Amazon. <laughs> I'll be happy though because everybody who buys a wrist vest from us, uh, he's, he's my friend. For sure. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll buy in the Amazon so I can <laughs> oh, see shit, now, I, I, gave them, I gave them a reason to buy from Amazon now, shit. <laughs> um, okay, so open topic, right? Yes. I think um, oh, eventually yes. I will get into the logistics, uh, Big Brain. I will definitely get into logistics and do something post boot. Sure, you know there is that there is there's so much there's so much opportunities in logistics, and I think it's also a very difficult uh, industry to uh, be successful in. Also, um, okay, so everybody, dump your questions. Uh, nothing is off limit. Uh, let's go with the first one uh, from Say My Name Boy. Now onto this topic. How are you wooting guys doing during this period of time? Uh, depends on how you interpreted it, but I think uh, you want to talk about COVID-19? Yeah, Eric, you kind of... hey, really want to talk about uh, COVID-19? <laughs> uh, I think personally, for the three of us, nothing really changes. Like personally, you know, with the restrictions in every country there is, uh, especially here still in the Netherlands, Scotland, the one that's sort of, uh, you know, just in general, eh? they don't yes, care. and not only. Um, okay, sorry. Go ahead. Huh? Uh, so personally, nothing really changes changed for us because the only only thing that we need to you know uh, follow the regulations and rules uh, all the countries have at the moment. Um, Business wise, we're doing pretty well during the Corona during this COVID nineteen virus because more people are at home. They probably want more keyboards or they have more money left to spend because not spending on a booze or whatever. So uh, we can't, in general, it's, we can't complain. Uh, it's no. weird though, because we are weird. Um, we don't know what to make of it. In the last two months, our, the amount of orders have in, has increased significant, significantly compared to last year. Uh, and we do think it's because of COVID-19. So it has a, it has a positive effect on our sales. Um, but in the last two months, we've also not been running our advertisements at all. Uh, but our advertisements are really simple though. It's like really baby stuff. Uh, and it's just uh, only about brand awareness. We don't do any kind of like, uh, you know, you miss, you don't miss out on this deal. Better get it now before it's gone. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not our so, style. Um, uh, on the other hand, it really stung us uh, in the beginning of the year when the virus was very active in uh, China. Um, yeah, it had some uh, major problems for us because it went down during Chinese New Year and then most of China is closed. But, you know, we wanted to continue with the development of products, uh, uh, the lack condition, uh, productions, that kind of stuff. Um, that really sting, 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 sting that is it, sting yeah. that's in the ass. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I actually, now that you're mentioning this, I think still with the Lucky Edition development, uh, there is already a couple steps that I'm looking, that I know that will need to be made, and I wonder how much COVID-19 is going to affect the amount of time it will take. And there's some really simple things, like um, when we want to do a trial production, you need to buy some sample components or just buying components in general, and it will just take longer than usual. Or maybe there is, uh, I assume there is a lot of suppliers in China that also went bankrupt. So uh, maybe, you know, all of a sudden there's like a supplier change uh, somewhere that we didn't know was whatever, whatever, you know. I, I'm just thinking of things that we might still encounter because of it. Um, <clears throat> I'll see about that. Okay. Uh, Simon Amboy, the... well, I've ordered Lekker on the first minutes of release, but not because I'm hyped about it, but just to support Wu Ting. That's uh, great. Great. Um, That's it. 
That's really, that's really good. He had also another question was, uh, did the wrist rest uh, sell well with all the goodness wishes? With all the goodest wishes. Uh, the wrist, I, I think the wrist rest has done, the, the wrist rest is doing exactly what we hoped it would do, I think. Uh, uh, we need to see the, we'll see the sales numbers next week and see how it went in April. But the launch of the wrist rest went well. Uh, now during these last months, the wrist rests are still going and I'm very happy. This is what, what I'm really happy about is to see people buying the wrist rest alone, only the wrist rest as well, not just, and that might be a new customer that hasn't bought a Wooting or at least maybe they bought it somewhere else, which would make me cry, but, um, but to see the wrist rest still moving as it is moving right now, it's making me, I'm really happy about that because I really, really want the wrist rest in itself to. Uh, be a product that uh, people will consider other than when you have a Wooten keyboard. Uh, uh, not sure if you answered this one, Calder. Uh, it was from uh, Maverick Man, 1313. Any word on Lekker ETA? Uh, oh, any word on Lekker ETA? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, so I think I answered it when the question was kind of asked. Mm -hmm. So right now there's still, there's no ETA that I can share. Uh, I think the best I can share right now, again, is the last update that I shared is super relevant right now. Uh, conclusions, uh, the things that we're doing, okay. Um, the things that we're, we are doing, um, have looked like it's going to work out. And we're going to get more conclusions in, within the next two weeks. Yes. And I can't be specific about it because, again, uh, we're, I don't want to make any details public or any attentions public uh, because it's still ongoing. And as long as this is ongoing, I don't want to be too specific. No. Uh, in the aftermath, I can I can share everything, like what we've done how it's worked out um, and you'll be be reading that hopefully in the may update and maybe the update otherwise in the update after that okay boom next question you you talked about from luxus you talked about loop on the last stream are there any ideas when you will release it uh no there aren't any ideas when we will release it uh, it's still an uh, an idea and to be honest it's not so difficult to set up but it will take us some time to uh to set it up but even though we will probably have it within the next three months because we need to do it in the next three months for some obvious reasons because in the next three months yeah. we have an opportunity still to make like these nice uh, uh, little things like little how would you say it pipettes bottles with lube in it a small amount that's enough for your keyboard in a very easy oh, way right. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. The opportunity will probably fail. Like a, like a little people. packaging. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So it it will be there at some point. Uh, yeah, it's interesting to bring it up. No, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Uh, it gets there when it gets there. Uh, new folks, Wooting Split Keyboard, when? Oh, oh never. <laughs> well, not anytime soon. Uh, we don't have any plans for a... Uh, for a split keyboard, it's also very uh, a very niche product, and even though the product is cool, uh, is very cool. Um, uh, yeah, maybe at some day, but not in the near future. Yeah, split split has some uh, challenges challenges of its own that we don't want to deal with right now. We would rather focus on what we're doing and the challenge that we have right in front of us right now. Okay. One wrist rest per keyboard. Oh, that was the wrist, with wrist rest, yeah. yeah. There's also a lot of wrist rest going together with keyboards, which is obviously really great because that was one of the other purposes. Um, let's see. Okay. I only buy fresh from local uh, markets. The Tommy, Tommy Man, any talk of a booting free? No, we're not talking about booting free. <laughs> it's like, uh, like all the big companies, uh, well, at least one big company, uh, I don't know if you heard about it. It's called Valve. That like program like Steam, and uh, they're also like sort of afraid for the number three. Uh, they never made a Left 4 Dead three. They're probably never gonna make a Half Life three. 
so we're sort of scared to make a Wooting free. Uh, it just doesn't make sense to make a Wooting free. So, uh. there might never be a free. Never. never. Meaning something with the name free. <laughs> Okay, so we have Elfin42. Today I saw a video of a DIY keycap printing press using sublimation printing. I think it would be a great opportunity to sell blanks and have a small keycap printing press to create custom keys. Oh, that's... I think you can find these kind of uh, sellers already on, what's it called? The DIY selling website stuff. Uh, what's the name of it again? Etsy? Um, Etsy, right. Yeah, you can already find them on Etsy. You have Etsy sellers doing that. I don't think you can do custom. Maybe some of them do custom. I think it's very, yeah. uh, very cool uh, to do something like that. And uh, maybe if it were a big operation and we had more free time, it's maybe something even can invest in because like making these DIY stuff, I think it's very cool, but uh, it's also not the smartest way to spend our time at the moment. Uh, but still, you know, it's yeah. good to make your own things. Uh, it's a lot of I'll, work to do it to DIY like that. And there are people out there who do better yeah. right, than we can ever do. But I know he's he's talking about the Linus Tech Tips uh, video, probably. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, uh, it's very simple to do. But the quality of the keycaps, the quality of the print that he, show, had, that he sh showed was also was okay, but not amazing. Um, but if, and if we would, uh, just thinking about it, you know, if we would ever consider doing this, we would probably build a custom machine or a machine that was made for it. So you can just do like a whole keycap set. That would be cool. Like, just like, um, how some companies do like, uh, you know, um, they have like blank t-shirts in stock and then they just dice up based on the demand, based on the order, order based. They dice up on order based or they do like silk print order based, but then with keycap sets. Uh, oh, what's this? This was an interesting one. Uh, from uh, Kanushi Link. Need routing function pad like Cooler Master control pad. It's a, uh, it's a sort of similar topic as the split keyboard, right? I mean, these devices are cool, um, but still, it's a very niche product, and at the moment, it's not worth our time to uh, invest in these kind of things. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe if it's like a, like a numpad, like a separate numpad idea, maybe that would be worth considering. When we make a next 10 kilos version, for example, to have like a separate numpad, maybe that's worth considering. But uh, I don't think we would make something like the control pad. Hey, you know what? I have the control pad here. Oh, oh it's not, we're not going to do it now, Carla. But we're, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other brother, oh, competitor, bro, oh, no. Competitor, no, we're even for, I mean, uh, I've heard from, uh, and also what I read on the Kickstarter page and for some other reviews is overall, it feels quality wise, it's there. Software wise, it still sucks, uh, but still, you know, it's uh, it's pretty cool there, the getting there in the analog market. Um, ooh, finally a cool question from uh, Sweeks and Sweeks, probably Sweeks, 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 Sweeks. I'm probably butchering the name. Uh, and I think it's already answered in the chat. Uh, is the Midnight Blue Rest the one matching the Lack Edition? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it uses uh, the same pantone. It uses the same pantone. But because the silicone makes it lighter, because the silicone material itself is already very uh, white, opaque, so it makes it a shade lighter. But it's the one that matches. Um, uh, it's because you're a subscriber, I'm only going to answer this question. Big Bang FK. So I heard there will be Eric Nudes coming together with every Lego keyboard. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to spoil the fun. Maybe. 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 Um, okay. It's finally going to be real, guys. <laughs> Ivy2B. The Eric Nude calendar. <laughs> what's the... Oh, 
Wait, okay. I'm this going... monkey is on a, on a Ferrari car, <laughs> naked. <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me answer this question real fast, and I'm going into the calendar because I still like that here. Once the rebinding update goes out of beta, will the macros be the next target? Uh, no. No, we won't focus on macros uh, after the rebinding update. After the rebinding update, we want to uh, uh, push the software to a point where we want to uh, have everything compatible with the lag edition and the new features that are coming with the lag edition, like the uh, rapid trigger, uh, dynamic profiles, maybe cloud profiles, uh, better uh, sharing of profiles and some other quality of life things. That will be the next thing we will focus on. And macros is very low on our priority list uh, for the simple reason. Uh, oh, and we're also going to overhaul and improve DKS in a very cool way uh, for the lacquer keyboards. And uh, it sort of looks like macros, but it's not macros. And uh, it will take us a lot of time to make macros on a quality level uh, that it's good enough for everybody to use. And so in the meantime, uh, I just would suggest use auto hotkey because that program will be 10 times better than we can ever make it within a year time or so too. Yeah, yeah, that's... I'm not saying it will never be there, but it won't be there anytime soon, Macros. Uh... Hmm. Um, yeah, about the calendar call, that was a very cool idea. We should really do a nude calendar. <laughs> that will probably sell, right? And, like, uh, have, like, and then we'll like, censor the and, private and, parts. Uh... Yeah, and then over your private parts, just have like a wooting product, you know? <laughs> the Wooting like, 2 is a perfect sensor <laughs> for Tanklers. <laughs> Maybe we should make a 6% for you, Calder. Oh my god. <laughs> if, yeah, that's a good one for you. And then we can do the vertical. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the Wooting 2, okay? <laughs> I mean, how cool is it? Let's say we launch a new product, and if you send it out to reviewers as a sort of blast, also include a nude calendar like I want. <laughs> it's only it's so much fun i mean i'm i'm totally game for it uh, i'm totally oh game God. for it it's because it's, uh i think it's gonna be just... such a bad idea because then everybody you meet right and you're like did they see the nude calendar <laughs> 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 I can see the pictures, right? So you're yeah, on a farm with a tractor behind you and these hay balls or whatever, haystacks. Oh, and I are lying there with a keyboard between your legs. <laughs> Maybe we should we should keep your wrecked car somewhere, then we can save it for the new calendar. <laughs> <laughs> can, I can hold the big broken off bumper. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. As long as you do it professionally, you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I have to be. Uh, you know, I, one thing that surprised me was like uh, Linus Tech Tips has this like couple of pictures that he's in his underwear or something to promote his like uh, underwear merch or something. And I was pretty surprised. Like, whoa, you know, that's pretty, uh, uh, pretty risky stuff. You know, I know it's it's funny, right? But it could have also been like, yeah, that's a bit too far. But uh, it's become a meme, so it ended, it ended well. But uh, yeah, that's, yeah. Hmm. Okay, Elvin uh, again. There's always talk about software macros. What's so bad about hardware macros recorded and stored on the keyboard itself? Um, there's nothing wrong with uh, uh, hardware macros, and I think it's even the better solution than software macros, right? Right, because you can uh, take your keyboard anywhere, and everything is stored on your keyboard. Uh, certainly enough, the Wooting One and Wooting Two won't have enough memory to store these crazy elaborate macros on their. Uh, uh, so that won't be an issue uh, uh, let's think say on a lacquer 2 or in a lacquer edition there we could implement something like that but still you, you can run you can run like an os on the lacquer edition there's so much memory on it true true so so <laughs> this is, so maybe it will come to the lacquer edition uh, i'm not saying it will how to um um yeah and we think you can uh yeah, you can do the most with the remapping thing, change keys around small things, have some uh, small macros made up with the DKS things where you can play around a little bit with. But yeah, these elaborated macros, uh, yeah, it won't come anytime sooner. But I do get your point. Uh, and if you make macros, we will probably try to include it within the hardware because that's 10 times cooler than software macros. 
for sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, one day, like we 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 don't know this for sure, but uh, there, when it comes to let's say to memory management and routine one, routine two, uh, maybe when we get further with the lecker edition development, and there's some things we want to push to the routine one and routine two. And uh, that we will consider like, oh, you know, maybe we want to, I don't know, for example, remove a whole profile and that instead will be a dynamic profile, um, in which is, uh, which doesn't take like the space in the memory, but it only takes space on your RAM. So it's like a temporary dynamic profile that is temporary saved on your keyboard as long as it's connected to the power or as long as your PC is running. So it's still on the keyboard and it's running on the keyboard. But it's not saved on the keyboard once you unplug it, um, and that saves that creates more space for saving other stuff on the keyboard. Um, but I'm it's just an example of you know different ways of dealing with memory and putting priorities to what you do and don't want to have on the keyboard. And then you have Lec Edition, and it's like you know there's so much memory on it. It's like it's like mind blowing much. Uh, I think it's there is no other keyboard on the market that has more memory uh, inside than the Lecker Edition. Well, the funny thing is with that amount of memory, uh, I just saw it in the chat, uh, can it run Doom? Size-wise, it can definitely run Doom. I mean, it would be pretty sick if that's an Easter egg. If you press like a code into that Doom pops up uh, on your computer, that would oh, be Oh, that would so be really sick. sick. Yeah. But I mean, uh. and again, we don't own the rights to the Doom game, so that's something we can never do here. <laughs> Apex Pro. Oh right. If, okay. I was thinking about the game. I was like, one and B for the game. What the hell? <laughs> but the keyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's. Yeah. Uh... I think the the only keyboard on the market that has a lot of memory is a Crosshair Keeper with eight megabytes. But why we needed the sixty megabytes? Because we're gonna use twelve megabytes for a picture, for the nude calendar. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Easter egg. The Easter it's, egg. It's going to be very elaborate Easter egg. Yeah, you, need to, <laughs> you need to know some code and then uh, get through some uh, encrypted uh, whatever walls. Uh, and then you can reach the 12 MB nude calendar. <laughs> yeah. uh, Lekker needs that memory to store AX huge package. <laughs> thanks, uh, Winter Jos, for joining in. See you next time. Um, See you in. Oh, this one. We think setup for streamers, like turn the numpad into an Elgato launchpad. That's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I had this talk with somebody uh, a couple of years back about Elgato and their, uh, their stream deck and everything. And it just kind of like um, exchanging words about, you know, how much does it really cost to make that kind of stream deck hardware wise, because it's extremely simple. It's just a frame with uh, these like off the shelf screen buttons. Uh, uh, but it's like, I don't know, the device is like a hundred something dollars. And um, for me, the conclusion came quickly to that what makes the Elgato stuff work very well and very nice. I mean, the hardware is just fine, uh, but it's the software. Uh, which makes a difference. The convenience you get from the software together with the hardware and how things just instantly work, that's what you're paying money for. And that's what, uh, and that's something, so if you're going to make something like that, you need to compete on a software level. Um, and we know software work is a lot of work. It's, uh, and you can't just easily uh, be you know, with hardware, you can at least like say, hey, let's just copy this shit, uh, exchange some things here and change this and that. And within a year, you can have exactly the same or better hardware for a better price. But with software, it's more like, hmm, you really need to think more about it. it. takes a lot of time to put it all together. costs a lot of money for people that need to be constantly working on it. And then once it's out there, you need to maintain it. You need to improve it. Uh, but at the very least, you definitely need to maintain it. And that just is much more difficult and expensive. Okay, I don't want to be the boogeyman, but I think we should end the stream right here, right now. Psst. Yeah, Eric, you're right. Uh, uh, okay. Nah, 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 nah. We know what you're saying. And Jerry said, I opened the whole topic here. I saw products with just physical silicone button pad that you put over the top of your phone. 
a variety of buttons. Wow, average goal. That's a pretty. That's pretty smart. That's pretty smart. <laughs> but it becomes a bit gimmicky. The I think that the real attractive part about the Streampad is that it's like a dedicated device for your streaming stuff and nothing else. No bullshit. Uh, and that's the same thing I can say about anybody saying anything about like some kind of generic macro pad, whatever button device, you know, or oh, you can just bind whatever. Um, and so there's simply button icons, keyboard markers are hard to memorize the location. Well, most things you can, I mean, just use auto hold key, make your own macros, uh, change the numpad into a macro pad. And uh, if you want custom keypad, keycaps, just look at the the detective videos, I mean, I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Everything is out there. You just need to find the pieces yeah. and puzzle it together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's, it, yeah, it's just it's a typical thing like, uh, well, I don't need to buy a 2,000 euro chair. I could just get a, a carton box and sit on the carton box. <laughs> and uh, that's also a chair. Well, I mean, sure, you can buy an expensive gaming chair of like 399 from some, I don't know, YouTube boy. Uh, or you can go to the Ikea and buy the Marcus, which is like the chair. Everybody the one needs. you're sitting on right now. Yes. <laughs> Best chair I'm sitting ever. on the most shitty chair ever. I, and I can't <laughs> lean backwards. That's why I'm so like hunched over to the front. <laughs> it's like this thing on the back can literally drop off. So I'm too afraid to like lean back a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, well, I had a blast to stream. Um, Thanks everybody for watching and the questions uh, and the kind words. Thanks for all the follows, the bits and all the subscriptions we got today. And of course, a special thanks to uh, uh, Big Brain AFK for being the MVP of the stream for giving away so many subs. That's a uh, pretty cool word. And next stream, stream us emotes. No, subscribe emotes. Yes, that's what we need. Subscribe emotes? Subscribe emotes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, bye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the video will be on YouTube. So, uh, and uh, of course, Eric did all the highlight markers. I did, I did. Maybe I... Uh, oh, really? Maybe I forgot one. I forgot where we went into the utility, but it's like one big thing about the profile. So, but there are stream markers there, so... Uh, okay, awesome. Then see you guys in the next uh, in the next stream which is in two weeks, right? Okay, bye-bye. Thank you.